What is up everybody? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to show you how you can make serum wavetables using your own voice. <laughs> Now I'm actually going to use three different files here. The first file is going to be just a normal, you know, just me speaking. I'm not a very good singer, so I'm not going to sing, but uh, it's just me saying, break it down, break it down, me kind of shouting. It's just a general vocal. It's not anything crazy. So I'm going to go with that because that might be the most relatable. You can kind of do that at home, whether you're speaking or shouting, uh, but the next two are going to be kind of weird. And I encourage you to get unique with your voice because, you know, the human body can produce a lot of sounds, especially if you know how to use your vocal cords and just, you know, just make strange sounds with your mouth. Like this is me croaking into the microphone, just going right into the microphone. And then I boosted it up really loud with a compressor and it turned out kind of interesting. Turned out kind of like deep and weirdly gnarly. So I'm going to try and use that and maybe I can get something cool out of that. And also I do dabble in death metal vocals. So this is me doing like a deep guttural growl. It's very loud, but maybe this can make uh, like a really interesting wavetable too. <laughs> Obviously that's compressed a lot and, you know, EQ'd and stuff like that as well. But I'm just going to see what I can do by throwing these sounds into Serum in different ways. So first of all, let's take the normal vocal and let's drag this in. Let's try some different methods here. Break it down. Uh, a lot of times these methods don't work out very well. You might get something like this. <laughs> And I encourage you to not be discouraged when you hear this because this happens to a lot of files that are good for wavetables. And we want them kind of down low. At least I want them down low. I want to get some interesting kind of bassy wavetables out of these. Break it down. So that doesn't work. So let's try this one right here. No, this one doesn't work either. It's very messy. Break it down. And let's try constant frame size here. No, nope, it looks exactly the same. We don't want any of that. Now you can go into the FFTs here Break it down. and find some more useful results. Break it down. I but I actually like to do things this way as well. Go import audio via fixed frame size and then try to find, uh, find the thing you want. So I'm going to try this and then I'm going to import it at 1000 samples or not 10,000, 1000 samples. This is what Virtual Riot does, do a lot of his wavetables and it's a good sample size. And that's a much more usable wavetable. You can you can get more stuff out of this. So the first thing I notice is that it's kind of choppy. There are a lot of weird chops and I don't really like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to process. I'm going to X fade edges to 16 samples and the edges kind of faded together. So now it will kind of stitch itself together a little bit cleaner as a wavetable. It's a little bit smoother. There's still choppy transitions between wavetables because there are no morph tables, but uh, that sort of, you know, cleaned up the edges a little bit and made it less clicky. So that's a good thing. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to normalize max from all frames. This one, normally I'd go uh, gain separately, but I'm just going to go max from all frames because I want there to be dynamic range in the vocal. I don't want every single frame, even the silence to be boosted all the way up. Uh, it didn't really do much, so it looks like it was already maxed out probably from this frame, which sounds kind of interesting. I like that frame. But uh, the next thing I want to do is going to be to try to morph them together to uh, make the wavetable a little bit smoother. And there are a bunch of different ways you can do that. So uh, if it works, I like using the spectral zero fundamental phase. It doesn't always work, but let's give it a listen. I actually like that a lot. It ended up working very well. And now I'm basically, this is a nice, you know, clean ish version of my vocal. <laughs> that's kind of funny. And that's just some like vocal manipulation. But if we wanted to save this as a wavetable, just as the vocal that says, break it down, then great. We can do that. And we have that vocal as a wavetable, but we can do more stuff to it too, especially if you want to make it, you know, like, like bassy, we want to make it sort of squelchy or kind of nasty. If we want like a growly wavetable, we can totally do that. Uh, that kind of would use something more along the lines of the bending, like say bend plus or minus. As a matter of fact, let's have this play the vocal. You can hear it kind of saying, break it down. And that's just a cool vocal effect. I just like that. 
Break it down. And maybe we can just morph. Break it down. Break it down. Maybe slow it down. Break it down. You know, different things like that. Maybe we can go asymmetrical. Whoa, this one's cool. And that's a lot of fun. We could do that. So let's say I want to make this a wavetable. Let's uh, turn on oscillator B, flip it down. Let's bring it to the same octave right here. So they're both at uh, negative two. And all we have to do here is make sure this is on envelope and on one bar. And now we can go into the menu and hit resample to oscillator B right there. And now we have our wavetable. Now let's give this a listen. And that is a nice wavetable. I actually really like that. It's very clean. So let's normalize max from all frames. And uh, now we have the wavetable and we can save it, you know, wherever we please. Especially this down right here has some nice frames. So that's a successful wavetable just using one of the vocals. Let's try the other ones that are very not normal. First one is going to be the croak. That's a weird sound. Let's see if any of these work. I don't know if they will. It looks very messy. Nah, it's, it's, it's way too low. Now that one doesn't work either. Constant frame size. No, nah, it's the same. Uh, we may be able to get some good stuff out of the FFTs. Even the FFTs don't sound that great. Okay, that one could be a, a lot worse, but it's still not what I want. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did last time where I can import via fixed frame size. Uh, go to 1000 samples again. Okay, as you can hear, it's still very messy. Just because of the inconsistencies of the wave file. But if we go into this, you can see the individual transients that we like. Like this is a good table. Here's a good table. Here's a good one. Like you can hear the nice ones and uh, you can see them too. They're very clear. That one's a better table than this one. And it's definitely a better table than this one. So we know what we're looking for. And you can go in and just delete the ones you don't want. Like if I don't want this one, then I can just take this out. I don't want that one either. You know what I'm saying? You can find the right spots. And obviously this could take a while. And if I were to do this, I would not, I definitely would not go through all 157 tables. I'd probably just take a little snippet. You know what I'm saying? I'd probably just go, okay, from here to say, here, I'm going to sort through all my favorite wavetables back here, and I'm just going to keep those. Again, that would be time consuming, but this is a video. Movie magic, am I right? I can bring out the wavetable that I prepared earlier. This is like a cooking show or something. So uh, let's see, it's been sitting here for just the right amount of time. There we go. Smells good. But before we dig in, we have some editing to do because as you heard, this thing is still very messy. There's a couple of things I want to do. And the first thing would be to uh, morph. So let's go morph and let's see if we can go spectral fundamental phase. It worked for the last one. Maybe it'll work for this one. Nah, I think this is a good example of where the spectral zeroing fundamental phase doesn't work very well. We get like weird aliasing in between the wavetables. It's no good. So I'm just going to go morph crossfade and maybe that'll work a little better. That is a little bit cleaner. And I think I'm gonna add some effects here again. Let's try bend plus minus. That's very interesting, I like that. So let's kind of create this wavetable. Let's go like this. Let's make sure we do like we did last time where it's on envelope mode and set to one bar. And let's do a little bit of bend minus motion. That sounds interesting, I like that. So let's do what we did last time. Again, let's take this down two octaves, uh, bring the level down, and just resample to oscillator B. There we go, and now we should have our wavetable pretty good here. It's a really interesting kind of squelchy, growly wavetable. We could do something again, maybe like a mirror. Now the mirror is a little messy. It's too high frequency, maybe an asymmetrical. The asymmetrical plus sounds very nice. 
I enjoy that a lot. So maybe let's render this out again. Let's just go like this. Let's turn this on, turn the level down. And maybe a little bit of motion here. And now let's resample to oscillator A. There we go. And now let's have a listen to this again. Let's turn off the bend minus, right? And let's turn off this, uh, this wavetable uh, moving right here. There's some very interesting tables in there, and this is very usable for a lot of things. Looks very pleasing too, it's like a mountain range. So that's a really interesting, kind of not as heavy, but still squelchy and growly wavetable created using, you know, my voice just going into the mic and then compressed up. Uh, and keep in mind, these won't really come out like digital wavetables, you know what I'm saying, where you, you'll have kind of a harsh digital sounding signal. A lot of these will come out more, more growly and a little more squelchy. They'll come out a little deeper because that's generally how audio files tend to turn out as wavetables. They tend to turn out you know, deeper and a little harder and better for basses. But lastly, I'm going to try out uh, my guttural scream here. There's a lot of low frequencies that I uh, would have cut in a song, but we'll see if it, uh, see if it sounds good using the default serum uh, presets for importing here. Nope, sounds like garbage. <laughs> let's, let's try this one. Nope, that's still very messy. I can tell just by looking at it. If it looks like a carpet, it's probably not a great wavetable. Let's try this one. Hmm. Yeah, that's even worse. Maybe we can get something good out of the FFTs. That is something a little more usable. First thing is this wavetable is a little bit annoying. That one's fine, but this one is annoying. So I'm just gonna delete it and start right from there. Now I like the wavetable, like I like the tonality of it, especially that ending, but there's so much of the same kind of sound because I'm holding those words out for so long, I'm just going just like forever. So I wanna make sure that that doesn't leave us with you know the same sounding table all the way through. And I think what I wanna do is I wanna delete a lot of these frames. And a good way to do this, I've discovered, is going into add remove and then the reduce to function here. And what this will do is, let's say I select this one, 128. That means I'm going to keep half of the frames. So every other frame is going to get deleted. It's gonna keep one, it's gonna throw away two, it's gonna keep three, it's gonna throw away four, and so on and so forth. So if I go like that, it's gonna be half the size, right? And now we have a wavetable of half the size that we did before. And it's a little more usable, it's a little more choppy and we can work with it a little better, but it's still not quite as good as I wanted to because I'm holding that vocal up for a long time. So I want to uh, add remove, reduce to, and 128, I'm just gonna keep it again. And so we have half again. And now this has become a lot more usable. We can make this into a wavetable. So let's try a uh, more spectral zeroing fundamental. Let's try that, maybe that will work. That did not work, it sounds pretty good. Uh, let's try crossfade and see if that's any better. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the crossfade and I can normalize max from all frames. So there we are. There's our table. And just like I did before, I could affect this. Like I could add different uh, bending motions here. some weird alien sounds. I could of course add the bend plus, the bend minus. Make my growl sound a little more juicy or we could do like we did for the other ones, asymmetrical plus or minus. Or you could get creative and go do something like remap and just try to mess it up a little bit. Like I'm actually a fan of that. I think that sounds pretty good. But also what I wanna do in this one is I want to normalize each gain separately. I want them all to be exactly the same volume this time. So 
So we're not missing out on anything here. And now we can try rendering it to oscillator B. Boom. Ah, oh, that's kind of that's kind of interesting looking. It sort of warped the time there. And let's see what it sounds like. I like how it sounds very vowely and sort of real. And that's the benefits of kind of making things with your own voice. You can make it sound natural. And actually, when I was testing this out, I kind of made a wavetable using that growl and I added the mirror function and created this sound. And then once I put some effects on it to make it thicker and fatter. Unfortunately, I forgot to save the wavetables actually made in this session. I, I got too excited, you know, throwing in new sounds and I lost the wavetables, but I will include the audio files that I used in this. And you can follow along the tutorial if, if you want to get exactly the table that I had. You can try your luck at those sounds as well. But the main thing I kind of want to encourage with this video is I want to encourage you to get creative, you know, with your vocals, with other people's vocals, you know, any kind of sound you can make or record anywhere that has any kind of depth and frequency can be made into a wavetable and it can be very usable. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we are coming out with more music production tutorials all the time. And also let us know down in the comments below what kind of videos that you would like to see in the future. We like hearing from you. We really appreciate all of your support and I will see you you in the next video. Happy producing.